to my kitchen. Today, we are making bouffe bourguignon. Julia Child bouffe bourguignon, to be precise. Um, it is delicious. It's one of my favorite, like, just really, I'm drinking Coca-Cola, by the way, today. I know, very, I've deviated. Um, I've been listening to an audio book um, called The History of the World in Six Glasses, and so it's about, like, the six beverages that have, like, changed the landscape of the world, and the last chapter is about Coca-Cola and the rise of, like, American industrialization and blah 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 and that just really gave me a hankering for a coke so i'm drinking a coke one coke and then back to water and coffee and matcha so so there you go so today we are making beef working out and i've gotten started a little bit without you so you got here late i don't know i don't know i don't know what to tell you it um is pretty simple um it's a one pot situation um, with a couple of steps. So you kind of have to take some stuff out and put it back in, take it out, put it back in. Um, and then it goes into the oven for many hours, like three. So we're eating a late dinner um, at this house tonight. That's gonna be worth it. Um, we are using wine in this because it has wine in it. Um, I got a Pinot Noir. I did not get a French Pinot Noir because it looks expensive. Um, but we, use a Pinot Noir because Pinot Noir grapes are grown in the Burgundy region of France, which is where this dish is from, Bourguignon and Burgundy. So there you go. Pinot Noir. Name that reference. You get five cool points if you get it. So um, it starts with some bacon. Um, I've got like one of those, you know, half a pound of bacon that I have I just cut into chunks and I have crisped up and there's a ton of oil in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, the bacon out and put it on a paper towel lined plate. And then I'm gonna pour off any um, extra oil into here and any of the fat because um, I'm gonna um, brown our beef in there and I don't want it swimming in fat. Um, and we're gonna do it in shifts and so I want to make sure we have plenty of fat for that so let me do that and then we'll get back okay so we've done that I have a two and a half pound really we're looking for like two and a half to three pounds of beef um this is a chuck roast um and I'm just gonna dice it up I'm gonna season it with salt and pepper and then I'm gonna start browning it in stages um it's gonna take probably two or three or four batches we want each piece to be really nice and, and um, seared on the outside so that's going to be what happens next. So I'll move you so you can see that a little better.
All right, so here is our beef and our bacon, and we're gonna leave these off to the side. And I'm gonna cut um, three to four large carrots. And I'm using one and a half yellow onions because the recipe traditionally calls for um, pearl onions in addition to some ch uh, diced onion. But I, one, don't wanna deal with a pearl onion because peeling them is like a nightmare. And two, I just wanted to use what I had. So I am um, omitting the pearl onion, but bulking up on my just plain yellow onion. So. I've added more bacon to the bottom of the pan. I've got carrot going in. leaving my onion in kind of big pieces just because I want to be able to see it. So there's a half. Oh, I almost forgot about five cloves of minced garlic. an issue you can substitute for any other gluten-free flour that you would typically use you can skip this step entirely and then thicken it at the end with cornstarch but if you're really gonna do it do it you know what I'm saying you're doing it right all right Don't be shy. It is going to cook off, so don't, don't be shy. It's about uh, half the bottle. Then I'm going to cover it the rest of the way with beef broth. Um, I use a low sodium just because I want to control the amount of salt that goes into it. We just want to pour it in until it's covered. Which I think is going to take all of this. Yep. We want to bring it up to a boil on the stove and then it's going to get covered and put into a 350 degree oven for three to four hours. I'm gonna use the um, spoon to kind of scrape the bottom of the pan. There's all those good meat drippings in there that we want to help flavor our sauce, so. 
electric stoves and cast iron skillets both hold a lot of heat in, so I'm always turning it on, turning it off to help control the heat because it's not a gas stove. Uh, unfortunately, it's not gas. I'm also going to taste this um, sauce before it goes in because I just want to make sure that the seasoning is right because it's going to be a lot harder to, to do that once it's already cooked. I'm going to add a little more salt. By a little, I mean like that much more. <laughs> college. I don't use it much anymore, but I use the crap out of it when I worked in restaurants. So get one like this way better than the like twisty toppy ones. These, cause it has a little knife that you can cut the foil with around the outside. There you go. Pretty great. Top tip. for it to boil. Brief panic attack that um, this wasn't recording because when I moved the camera, I apparently turned it off and then um, and then I talked a little bit about potatoes and mushrooms. <sighs> that would have been terrible. So anyway, it's boiling. It's going to go in the oven. I'm going to do my things and live my life for the next three hours. And then we're going to come back together, saute some mushrooms and eat this business. Okay. All right. Bye. Guys, I forgot something. One second. I'm gonna go to French culinary school jail. <sighs> forgot the herbs. Woo. Woo. Crisis averted. The good thing about this recipe is um, I typically just throw in whole, whole bit, bits of it. So like, I've got some rosemary. It's just going right in. I've got some time, it's going right in. Um, if you've got other things that you like, um, and here there's a little sage. Um, I probably wouldn't do sage because it gets weird sometimes, but I like a lot of thyme, so it's going in there. Give it a little, poke it down in. Then at the end, all you have to do is fish out the uh, stems. Whew, whew, crisis averted. I can keep my diploma. Whew, all right, back in. It's only like 10 minutes. I was switching the laundry over. I did my best thinking in the laundry room. Okay, done. For real, see you in three hours. Bye. All right, friends. It has been like three and a half hours and our beef boarding out is done. So the only thing I have done additionally is I have sauteed some mushrooms um, and a little butter and garlic and season them with a little salt. And I'm just gonna add those in on top. We don't wanna cook them forever and ever because they'll just break down and be really terrible. So we saute them at the end and then add them. I haven't opened this yet. I'm, let me let me angle you down. I haven't opened this yet. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it smells, I, you, my house, it just smells so good. I can't even, this meat is like falling apart. Oh my gosh. And then we're gonna add the mushrooms in on top. Now, depending on a lot of variables, your sauce will be varying degrees of thickness. So if you added, 
either no flour at all or not enough, it'll still be really thin. So what you can do is you can scoop out all of the bits and just reduce that sauce down a little bit more and it'll thicken on its own. Um, mine I think is like kind of perfect. Um, so I am not gonna worry about that. So we've got the mushrooms in here. We've got a nice um, delicious looking sauce. I just wish you could, you can see that, yeah? Oh my gosh, you guys, look at it. It looks so good. So the best thing to serve that with is potatoes. You could do mashed potatoes, roast potatoes, whatever. I have some mashed potatoes, so I'm gonna dish up a little bit. I made kind of a loose like palm puree more than like a mashed potato, like thick kind of guy because I think it's really nice to have it really, really creamy with the beef. So just gonna fill the bottom of my dish. I'm gonna get a big old chunk of some meat. Some mushrooms, a couple pieces of mushroom. This is gonna be so good. And here it is. Beef bourguignon. It's going to be too hot to eat, but I'm going to try. Oh my goodness. Little story for you. I went to the Culinary Institute of America, which is a French culinary school in New York. And I started there. The day I moved to college was the first day I'd ever been on campus. I just like on faith, went to this school because I had seen them on campus. Um, I'd seen them on campus, the campus of the school on a cooking show that was on PBS called Cooking at the CIA. And it was in this big demo theater and there's all these culinary students just in this perfect row and they're perfect chef whites or they're perfectly straight toques. And these like chef instructors were like teaching them, you know, doing these demos of these like dishes. And I was like, I am gonna go to that school. So day one of orientation, eight o'clock in the morning, we are in that demo theater and I'm like in tears because it was just like, I can't believe I'm here. And all along the back wall, they have handprints of, of famous chefs that have come to the school, um, kind of like at the Chinese theater in Los Angeles, you know, handprints in concrete. And I put my hand in Julia Child's handprint and I was like, I'm here, I'm home, I've made it. So anyway, she, I will love her my whole life. And one day in heaven, I will tell her how, and one, and one day I will love her for my whole life. And um, if you are wanting to learn to cook really classically French dishes, just start with her because she's fantastic. So anyway, here's our beef bourguignon. Holy Hannah, it's delicious. The sauce is aces. I've nailed this, just so you know. <laughs> Too bad you can't eat it. Some of you might. I'm sending some of this to my mom tomorrow, so she'll get to have some. My roommates both decided not to eat this for dinner, so I don't, I don't really know what the deal is. Anyway, <laughs> more for me. All right, friends, love you. See you tomorrow. Au revoir.